Uh, firstly, AJ, an apology and, and then a couple of questions. Um, firstly, I'd like to apologise for my projections at you on Friday afternoon. Yep. Um, to be honest, I, my initial response was I had no idea. Yep. Uh, but when I thought about it, it was a case uh, I'd made a choice not to recognise the signs. Yeah. So I, I apologise for that. It was, and I realised that it was. Um, you probably just wanted to be there, here to have fun. You didn't want to deal with any of that sort of stuff, and you cop all that sort of crap all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's true. But um, what if I can go back to the events on Friday? Um, what I did with Dave is uh, Dave projected at me quite some quite needy emotions. And after about three or four times of it occurring in, in a place of about 20 minutes, um, I just grabbed hold of Dave, you know, by both shoulders, and I said, stop, Dave. You need to look at why you're doing this with me. What? And Dave said, what am I doing? I don't even know. And, he, and I said, well, you're projecting all of this needy emotions at me. You want my attention and approval for some reason. Why is that? All right? Now, you're not yet being honest about your response, my friend. Yesterday, what happened? Can you, can you remember what happened yesterday for you? Uh, yeah, I, I, was, I was umming and ahhing about whether to make an apology to you then. <laughs> yeah. As to, um, and I was, uh, I, was, I was scared of two things, at least. Mm -hmm. um, firstly, that, um, uh, that I may be projecting at you again. And secondly, that um, that you would make me aware of more stuff than, than I already was. <laughs> Which well, he's now doing. <laughs> that's what I'm going to do now. <laughs> <laughs> There's an emotion that you didn't own yesterday and still are not owning today. If you look at your actions yesterday, what, what happened yesterday? Can you remember? I... I think, and I was, I was going to ask you this in a moment, that I was um, in some fear. Um, so I was sort of, wasn't feeling terribly bright, wasn't feeling myself, wasn't even sure whether I should be here. And yeah. I actually lay down up the back corner so that I, to try and minimise any projections to anyone else. So you went into the shutdown mode. Can you see that? Okay, I thought I was trying to just stay in my fear but not, not affect anyone else. Yeah, you went into shutdown mode. You wanted to not, you, you were worried about the projection to others and, in, and instead of involving yourself in day-to-day -day activity, you withdrew. Okay. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. You also went to sleep. Did I? And where did you go to sleep? On the floor. And you remember going down to the processing rooms? Yes. And you went to sleep down there? Um, yeah, I think I did now you mention it. Okay. Why did all these things happen? Can I explain? Sure. You have a deep, um, so let's look at the grief. So we've got, remember that we're talking about the grief and then we've got the fear and then we've got anger and then we've got suppression, right, or depression. This has been a problem for you, hasn't it, getting into depression? Or suppression? No, I've come to realise this weekend, actually, that um, uh, I didn't think I was a very fearful sort of a person or even an angry person. Yeah. But I've come to realise that I have a whole swag of fears. And I'm saying to some of the others earlier that I did a fear list earlier in the week and it was only like eight or ten items. Yeah. Um, and now I could write out pages and pages of fear. Yeah. So you're being more honest with yourself. So that's like wonderful. What's happening too is that here's you, you're quite mediumistic and here's the spirits, some spirits with you. These spirits are addicted to the natural love path. Right? And so what's happening a lot when you're talking to other people is you're channeling a lot of their information that they're giving, quite accurate information at times, that, you, they, that you're give, giving through you. But there's a reason why you're doing that. You're addicted to the process of that occurring because you're trying to always get away from your own process. And so what you, do, what you were doing with me on Friday is you were coming along projecting at me because there's some big issues for you to face about taking full responsibility for your own process. Remember right from the time we first met, I've mentioned this to you, how 
often you would disclaim your own responsibility in preference to the spirit's desire. Right? And remember that, remember how I was even concerned for your long term uh, state of whether you could stay alive or not because of it. Because a lot of these spirits were leading you down paths which could have easily resulted in your own death, even. And I'm not afraid of your death, but what I'm saying is that they, weren't, they didn't have a loving feeling towards you. And, and that comes from a desire in you to get away from your own responsibility to exercise your own free will to discover your own emotional issues. Mm -hmm. All right? mm -hmm. now, now what I'm suggesting to you is you're going to have to allow yourself now to start stepping down here. You believed up until recently that there was no anger within you. I'm not allowing myself to feel my anger. Exactly. Because what are the judgments about anger? Uh, anger is not a good thing to, to display and, and, and being an eldest child and all that sort of thing, you're supposed what? to be responsible. And what happened every time you got angry? You got into trouble for it. Yeah. yeah. All right, so there's a lot of judgment about anger and there's a, there is a, quite a, number, a lot of suppressed anger in you that comes from your childhood. Allow yourself to step down through that into what you were afraid of and then down through that into the actual grief. So, so what I would do is I would stop actually using your connection with spirits to tell other people things. I'd stop it completely if I was you. What I would do instead is use your connection with spirits to tell you about your own emotions. In other words, instead of being externalizing the gift that you have and, and you're doing that for a reason, it's to avoid your own emotions, Allow yourself to now look at your own emotions and help use the spirit connection that you do have to actually help you get into your own emotions rather than run away from them. At the moment, the heavy projections that come from you are, t are saying, I don't want to deal with my own stuff. I want you to help me. And you're projecting that at every person around you, not just me. Yep. And that's a heavy burden for other people because they are actually responsible only for their stuff. So, so my suggestion is to really like, try to look at all of those addictive behaviours you have that get you away from that. These spirits are going to very much oppose you doing that. They like, you like the power they give you when they tell you things about other people, right? Because you feel, oh, I automatic... Like one of the first comments you ever made to me, I just seem to know people's lives so much. I just seem to know what they're going to do or what's going on in their life, aren't I wonderful, <laughs> right, is the underlying mm. implication. But in reality, all it is is the spirit giving you that power, right? And the problem with the spirit giving us those powers is that we become addicted to those powers in order to avoid our own castle of grief. Can you see that? And this is something that's going to be very difficult for you to work through getting away from actually focusing on other people's emotional condition and coming back to your own emotional condition every single time. Because these spirits are hooked into this feeling that it gives you. The feeling it gives you is one of I know things, isn't it? It's wonderful. I'm important. You know? can, can I come back to that in just a second? Yep. So there is a gift there, is there? Of course. Right, okay. But it's not appropriate and I haven't been using it entirely appropriately. You, you have not been using it in a loving manner to yourself or to others. Yep. Yep. Okay, so I, I should just, just not worry about that side and when it's appropriate further down the track, may, maybe then. No, no, I'd still use the gift. But now use it in a loving manner firstly towards yourself. In other words, use it firstly as a mechanism to get into your castle of emotions. Does that make sense to you? I do, but I'm not quite sure how. Well, all you need to do is ask some spirits about your anger, for example. I realise now I've got anger. What, what am I angry about? Let, get some help from the spirit friends that you have to help you with your anger. Connect with what it's all about. So will they tell me the truth? Um, they may not, but it will still be a law of attraction event. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the beauty is if you stay open and connected, with the spirits who are there, they may not tell you the truth and then how will you feel? I feel pretty, pretty annoyed and disappointed, etc. Yeah, and a law of attraction event for your anger, you see. Okay. Can you see that? 
So even if they mislead you down a certain path, if you are staying focused on your emotion, you will be able to work through the causes. Okay? So I'm not saying tune out of spirits altogether. What I'm saying is stop using it for the reason of making yourself feel good about yourself. Because actually you feel quite bad about yourself. Yeah. Right? Let yourself feel some of those emotions and find out what the underlying causes are. Mm. At the moment, these spirits are just manipulating how bad you feel about yourself in order to have their own ends met. And I, I hear where you're coming from. And I, I'm actually not used to asking for help for me. It's, it's always been, or, or feeling help for me, it's been feeling help for others. But you actually have a feeling that you don't need help. Uh-huh, okay. Well, in actual fact, Up until I, recently. Yeah. yeah. Up until recently, you felt like you want to help the others. You were in a good space. You want to help the others. Yep. Recently, you've started to found, find some deeper emotions and you realise, actually, I do need some assistance too. But then you start projecting needy, ad addictive type emotions at people who can help you. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And yeah. I've become aware that I've, I've actually been doing that for most of my life and yes. hadn't, hadn't realised it. Yep, and your wife has distanced herself as a result and yep. you can see people who have distanced themselves from mm -hmm. that really strong needy projection. So yep. that's the addiction. So let yourself go through the emotions of seeing that addiction and then look at what underlying emotions are there as a result. Okay, I, I have become aware of, of a lot of fear yep. but also having difficulty actually getting at it. Yep. Um, the past few days I, I think I've been in some sort of minor fear process whereby my jaw's been chattering a little bit. It, is that for real? Yeah, but the problem you're facing is that these spirits want to shut down the process. This is why you slept most of yesterday or a lot of yesterday or you went into a zen out state yesterday a lot. If you think about it after we had a chat on Friday, you also sort of went into that big withdrawal state that you would have done a lot when you were a child. Oh, I, I thought I was reflecting on it, but I was escaping. Yeah, and, and these spirits want you to escape from your emotions because if you, escape from, if you don't escape from your emotions and you actually deal with them, they won't have the same control over you as what they currently have. Yesterday in our presentation, we mentioned many people were yawning, like, and we talked about yawning and getting tired and all that, and a lot of that is driven by spirits who don't want you to hear the information that, that actually will open you up and cause their connection with you to be reduced. And the spirits with you are very frightened of that. Okay, and then there's plenty of them. <laughs> yep, and I'd be happy to answer some of their questions after the break about it. Yeah. Dave, can I, can I just say as well, I feel from you a big desire to get it right, to get approval. And I feel like the spirits, with, like very often, that's why you get messages about other people because then you get it right. Do you know what I mean? Yep. And your projection at AJ is tell me I'm doing the right thing. Uh, did I get it right? And the big issue that you had a little while ago with the spirits was they were telling you the right thing to do and you felt like, oh, okay, I can do that then. Because there must be some stuff in your childhood about needing to get it right, getting approval if I do the right thing, like big stuff. And, and you're quite petrified about having your own desire. And getting it, it wrong. And getting it wrong. Okay, yeah. yeah. That and makes sense actually because, yeah, I, I, I have a tendency towards perfectionism yeah. Uh, and, yeah, really try and avoid to get it right, uh, really try and get things right the first time yeah. and not allow myself to make mistakes. Yeah, but the beauty of mistakes is that they often, you often learn a lot more from them than you do from getting things right. Yeah, I know that here, but... But you yeah. don't allow it emotionally to occur, yeah. So, so we, allow, the key is to allow yourself to address some of those causal emotions from your childhood of what happened to you when you got it wrong. So when you say allow yourself to access the causal emotions, you're in a fear-based state about your causal emotions. Yeah. And you're going to have to look at that fear, those fear things quite a lot more than you currently are. And you're going to have to allow yourself to, to visit the fear experientially as you're beginning to do. But understand that these spirits who are with you, they want to stop that process in you. They don't want you doing this. And so you've got, firstly, the emotional hook into these spirits that you will need to address. And the emotional hook into these spirits is the desire to know things about other people's lives 
right? Because it gives you a sense that you are, you know, important, important and, yeah. and um, what is one of the things uh, that you have a role? You often come to me saying, "What is my?" Yeah, I, I have a need for a, for an important life purpose. Exactly, and and so and it's that desire that they are actually hooking into. In the end, when you give up that need for an important life purpose, they won't be able to hook into this emotion inside of you anymore. You'll start focusing on your own emotions, and when you do that, these spirits, you'll actually start recognising your own life purpose, if you like, without having anyone else tell you. You remember one of the first questions you ever asked me is, please tell me what my life's purpose is. And remember what my answer was? I'm uh, not going to tell you. <laughs> I, from memory, it was look for issues in... in um uh, suppressing my desires with my mother. Yeah, so, so I was pointing you back to the emotions that prevented you from seeing your own life purpose. Does that make sense? Yeah. So should I try and access childhood memories or just try and feel what's... Just feel everything as it current... One mistake many of you are still making is you're trying with your mind to do things that your law of attraction is showing you you don't even need to do because there's different things happening with your law of attraction. You just need to feel the events that are being triggered in your law of attraction as they occur. So me coming up to you and saying, David, <laughs> is a law of attraction event for you. Saying, stop projecting needy emotions at me. Right? That's a law of attraction event for you. Allow yourself to feel about that. You know? And there was some rage in there that you suppressed by going to sleep. Oh, I had no idea. Mm. And you need to allow yourself to connect with some of that rage and then... Because I, I wasn't giving you the approval you were seeking. Yeah. Thank you. No worries. Now, I think it's, I think it's probably time, time for a break. break. So let's have a break. Come back around four-ish or so. And then we'll get on to the real subject. <laughs>